Welcome to this edition of Media Minute. For this episode, we're talking about a new Galaxy Quest, a trailer for them, City of Lies, and also some of our favorite B-movies. We'll be back right after this. Welcome to Media Minute. I'm Michael Forward. I'm Chris Raskowski. And I'm Rachel Edge. And we're kicking things off by talking about, uh, well, it's an old favorite for me, Galaxy Quest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a movie. yeah, they have a new movie in the works. Uh, interesting thing, they were actually working on a TV series for a little while, Amazon was. And then, of course, Alan Rickman passed away, so they just kind of, you know, put the shutters on it because Alan Rickman was a big part yeah, he was. of Galaxy Quest. By Grab Thor's hammer, what a sale, or whatever it is. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, according to an interview with Sigourney Weaver, um, they're working on it. And of course, they're saying, like, you know, we can't replace Alan Rickman, but it'd be interesting to see what they do with it. So they are looking to get the original cast? Yeah. Nice. It sounded like from what the article said that, like, everybody was kind of on board, like, including Alan Rickman yeah. before he passed. Well, when they were doing the TV show, everyone was yeah. on board for it. But then of course we lost Alan so it it kind of sounded like they were gonna like pass the torch on to like it could be I mean a lot of the actors are getting up there yeah I mean Galaxy Quest was 99 and like everybody was kind of is it really uh yeah I think it was 99 wow yeah oh that's crazy that sounds about right oh yeah but it's just it's weird to think about because I think like the 90s were like what 10 years ago it's like yeah. actually for me the 80s were 10 years ago yeah, <laughs> yeah you'll never years. convince me otherwise yeah it's weird it's it's weird to think like that but yeah i'm excited yeah. i think it should be good i don't know what they're gonna do though i'm i'm curious it yeah. sounds like they have to rewrite a lot well it's one of my favorite like sci-fi comedy movies it's like, pretty good yeah um also checked out a trailer for a movie called them it's kind yeah. of a 1950s like psycho horror by yeah. the looks of it. Not a lot of info on like the plot. Uh, there's like a bunch of shots of a family moving to like a 1950s uh, neighborhood. I think seems to be like a lot of that going on now. People seem to be like revisiting kind of the idyllic 50s and yeah. kind of exploring that a little bit more. I got a lot of like Get Out kind of vibe. Yeah, I did too. Yeah, from the trailer. Like, I, I enjoyed what they showed in the trailer because it's, like, it gave me, like, a little bit of, like, what is this about? But it also didn't give too much away because, yeah. like, it was just the music and the shots, right? Yeah, there was no dialogue or anything. It's, it's, and I prefer trailers like that because I feel like you don't get a ton from it, but you also, like, it, it's enough to put a bug in your head to be like, hey, you want to check this out now. Yeah, it, right? it's enough to be curious about it yeah. at least anyway. Yeah, I'm excited. I think it should be good. Yeah. But, yeah, definitely a lot of Get Out vibes, too. For sure. I agree. For sure. Uh, next up, Johnny Depp is in something. Yay! Uh, it's so the uh, trailer for City of Lies, which is about the death of Biggie Smalls. Yeah. This, this looks pretty good. I'm yeah. excited. I, uh, oh, should I go? No. You, no, 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 no. Canadian standoff. Canadian standoff. Stand <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, wasn't there like a documentary or something in a few years? Like, I feel like I've, I've kind of seen something similar recently yeah i think and it, i, I can't is. place it yeah i uh, i was i was looking through the comments of the trailer and um one of the comments mentioned i think it was amazon they did a documentary about it yeah and they had like all the original investigators and stuff like that um, yeah did. yeah and it's like people were like oh i'm still gonna check it out though because johnny depp for sure i don't know johnny depp's not really a big selling point for, for like a movie like this for well, me? Yeah. Yeah. Like, if Johnny Depp wasn't in it, I'd still want to see it just as bad. Oh, for sure. But, like... I mean, it still looks good. But, yeah, like, the the actors, though, in it, they got some pretty heavy hitters, like Forrest uh, Whitaker's in it, too. Forrest yeah. Whitaker, yeah. Or, great. Whitaker, sorry, my bad. And it's, like, it looked like they actually got quite a few nominees for it. Like, I think he actually won an award, a global... Or, Golden Globe? That's it. Global. <laughs> they won global. <laughs> and then Johnny Depp also got um, a nominee, our nomination for that as well. But apparently they filmed this three years ago. They're just releasing it. it yeah, now. it's one of those movies that's been stuck in limbo yeah. for a while. Yeah. I'm kind of happy they're finally releasing it, though. It looks really good. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be nice to uh, nice to see. Um, yeah, Straight Outta Compton was good. Yeah. That was an awesome movie. I really like that one. But uh, also, what do you... the same topic, sort of. Yeah. Well, what do you have, like, basically violence. a clone of like ice cube <laughs> yeah, yeah <his> <laughs> playing so ice cube like it. it's, it's uncanny it was yeah like i, I saw him like oh it's ice cube but i was like that's not ice cube ice cube is too old to look that young <laughs> as much as i'm going to enjoy watching this all i can think of though what i hear of biggie smalls is the south park episode where biggie smalls is like the bloody mary <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah if you say biggie smalls in a mirror like in the dark three times biggie smalls shows up oh man <laughs> 
Oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I'm definitely going to be checking uh, that one out. Um, I also dug up a uh, documentary on uh, Doug Jones. My favorite guy. That's your boy. Oh, yeah. I'm so excited. He's yeah. so, that was such a good one. It's called uh, Man Behind the Max. Masks. Masks. I can't say mass, mass, mass. My mass, mass. Yeah. Don't worry, we'll edit it. Yeah, edit it. <laughs> if you're ed, 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 ed. Um, But yeah, it's pretty cool if you're like a fan of like creature yeah. effects and creature actors. Uh, it's a short documentary. It's only like 25 minutes or yeah. something like that. But uh, they interview Doug and he talks about how he got started in the business and uh, they interview uh, Del Toro yep. and uh, why Del Toro uses him a lot for like the creature effects and stuff. He actually got to start in miming. Yeah, I thought that was crazy. I didn't yeah, realize that, that before. That makes sense. Yeah. Well, it's like I guess that's part of the reason he got so many parts though, is because he was a mime and he was able to do like the really good like that stuff. But he was also a contortionist as well, so he's yeah. able to like twist himself yeah. in ways that are like not humanly. And there's <laughs> he's done like so many things that you didn't realize it was him. Yeah. Like the uh, old McDonald's commercial with like the Moon Man. <laughs> yeah. I had no idea that was him. <laughs> and uh, the zombie from Hocus Pocus. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know it was him either. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But like I've always loved Doug Jones. Like my biggest goal in life is to like write a script and have Doug Jones as one of my care like one yeah. of the, one of the creatures and stuff because he's just such an incredible actor so doug there's your head there man. yeah there you go actually my sister has offer. my sister has him following her on her art account oh i, I was like hey create a create a creature <laughs> i'll write a script we already got him let's just do it <laughs> let's do it yeah no um as much as like i'm not a huge fan of the new uh, star trek discovery i uh, haven't even looked at yeah it. no no he, interest. he is the highlight of that Oh, he's in that, that yeah. series, yeah. Yeah, he plays one of the aliens? Yeah, he plays like a alien lieutenant. And Seems yeah, to be his thing. yeah. That does a fantastic job. Like I, I said, it's the highlight for me yeah. for for that series. Like watching that documentary, I think the one thing that like actually kind of made me mad was like how the reporters were like interviewing him being like, "Oh, what's it like to like work with Jonah Hill and all these yeah. big stars?" He's like, "You're joking, right?" <laughs> yeah. I'm like, "Do you not know who you're talking to? Like this guy's literally been almost every movie monster in like current generation yeah, like i spend the majority of my day in spandex covered in ping pong balls yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like it he does it well yeah he's he, i don't know i don't think he gets enough love to be honest and the fact that he got like overdubbed yeah uh, for like a few movies i think hmm. i think he said three times because one was for pan's labyrinth he did learn like yeah. spanish to it do was it. because it was spanish yeah that right it makes sense and um then there was another one too what was it oh uh Hellboy, yeah. uh, Abe, the oh, first yeah. movie. But Del Toro was like, hey, man, I know that we dubbed you in the first movie, but if we do another one, we'll use your voice. And so, like, the second movie was actually Doug Jones. Yeah. Which I thought was, that was nice. I was like, yay, he's finally getting it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, that was, uh, like I said, for, like, 24 or 25 minutes. They really? packed a lot in. And, yeah. Uh, like I said, it's on YouTube. Just search for Man Behind the Masks. If you're, in, <laughs> if you're into mimes. <laughs> yeah. This is a weird pursuit. Like, when I grow up, I want to be a mime. Well, he kind of like fell into it. He yeah. he was going to college, and then he for what? I don't know. I, don't know. I, I think it was like act. It was some sort yeah, of yeah. It was like, like artistic. I think, yeah, I think it was like fine arts or something. Yeah. I, I can't quite remember, but he like literally fell on it, and he was like, you know what? I'll give it a go. And then he went into it, and then he was like, I really enjoy doing this kind of stuff, and it yeah. actually opened quite a few doors from commercials, like movies, like everything. Yeah. And you can see it. It makes sense for what he does because yeah. he does like a lot of like fluid hand movements and stuff yeah. in the actual uh, movies. So yeah. was he in Grinding Nemo? He, yep. Yeah, he was. He was Nemo. He was Nemo. He, he was that. Right. He was. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's because Del Toro. He uses him in everything. Like in, in I think it was in Hellboy. He was like three different characters. Same thing with Pan's Labyrinth. He was <laughs> he was the pale man too. Yeah. And it's kind of funny because he spoke on like. He never gets freaked out by his characters, but the performance of the Pale Man, even he was like, oh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, that's creepy. <laughs> but yeah, but it's like, I didn't know like some of the stuff, like how much out, like work went into like creating them and stuff and like hearing like, oh yeah, like I pull like 18, 20 hours a day. Oh, yeah. for sure. And like, not just for makeup, but for like the acting as well. Like, I guess for like the, the angel of death, I think it was Hellboy. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken. They had it like a, they had a rig on him with the, with the wings. And Del Toro, like, realized that he was bleeding. Like, his back was messed up because of the wings. And he was like, yo, we need to fix this. Like, that's cut. Yeah. But I was like, holy crap. And there was, like, another guy, too, that Dead had, like, 130-pound suit on him. Yeah. And I was like, holy crap. I'm like, cool. That's awesome. But, like, dang. Yeah. Like, the phys physicality of it is just nuts. Yeah. it's uh, And he spoke, too, on, like, you know, 
it's still like practical creature effects, but yeah. it's kind of overlaid with CGI, yeah. so it's it's mm -hmm. a, a blend. I guess that's how we're going to see things. Like pure CGI never quite no gets it, but yeah, I can see using practical effects with some CGI overlay. Oh yeah, I think it's I think it's better that you keep the practical effects though. Yeah, like CGI oh, is yeah. great, but like seeing the work and stuff that everybody puts into it, it's like you can't get rid of that. Yeah. Hopefully my head doesn't get in the show. <laughs> uh oh. He's moving the mic again. Risky business. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, that brings us to our main topic for this episode, which is uh, some of our favorite B movies. Yeah. Not not the Jerry Seinfeld B movie. Yeah, Let's well. make that especially like clear right now. <laughs> we are not touching the Jerry Seinfeld B movie. Uh, but do you have like a, a hate on for like the B movie? It's that was weird. It, yeah, it's it is. I it's mean, weird. A grown woman falling in love with a bee. Yeah. How did they pitch that? <laughs> What's this with all the attractive bees? You ever notice? <laughs> you ever notice how attractive bees are? What is know, what is the deal <laughs> with <laughs> all these attractive bees? <laughs> <laughs> I, I almost meant Obama on that one. That was weird. Yeah, that was a little. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Who wants to start this one? I can go first, sir. Sure. Yeah. Uh, tried to dig up some fun facts, but really couldn't pull up anything. So I'm just going to talk about the movie and the movie itself. First one, The Stuff. Oh, such a good one. Great movie. Let's see if I can. There we go. Um, basically, these two old dudes find this, like, well, stuff. Kind of like a yogurty, ice cream texture kind of stuff. Slurry yeah. <laughs> stuff. <laughs> yeah, and they package it, and then they get real famous, and the stuff turns out to be basically a life form that the more you eat of it, the more it takes over your body. Very much kind of like a, almost like a nod to Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Okay. While being a bit of a social commentary on 1980s consumerism. And yeah, uh, it's just a good time. It's, yeah. yeah, if you want to watch people kind of turn, not really zombies, but definitely yeah. overtaken. Yeah. Yeah. By the said stuff. See, and this detective has to uh, crack the case yeah. and bring the corporation down. Not to be confused with the right stuff. Yeah. No. Whole <laughs> Very different. different. Whole different movie. Although a crossover is in the works. Yeah. From what I hear. I, I would like it's to not. see that. It's not at all. <laughs> um, the one thing that, like, because this movie was really great, but, like, why would you discover something and then be like, yo, we should sell it for food? Yeah, like, like you're at that's work. That's a little weird. I, I feel like you wouldn't be able to get it. Like, you go to the FDA or whatever. They yeah. Use. It's like, hey, I found this stuff yeah. coming out of the ground. So it what's it made of? It's own stuff. Yeah. It's, like, yeah. it's all natural. I won't lie, though, watching it, though, like, after watching it, I kind of avoided yogurt for, for a while. I was like, nope, <laughs> yeah, I'm good. <laughs> Completely understandable. I get it. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So any uh, weird... Goo, yeah, like gooey stuff you have in your fridge. It's gonna get you. So long yeah. story. Clean out your fridge. Yeah, yeah. clean out yeah. your fridge and don't eat stuff oozing from the ground if you don't know what it is. Yeah, Pretty if much. you see something <laughs> white and kind of fluffy and moving, don't. Eat yeah, it. no, don't. No. Eat it. Don't just, do it. Just as a general rule, just yeah. don't. Just don't. <laughs> what about, anyways, what about you, Mike? What you got? <laughs> um, well, for B movies, I had to go with uh, Evil Dead Two. Nice. Nice. Um, now, a lot of people think that Evil Dead 2 is a kind of a comedic remake of the first one. It's not quite, like, they reshot, like, the initial scenes, how, like, Ash got to the cabin because uh, they couldn't get the rights to, like, their own footage from the first movie. Oh, what? is that why they did it? So that's why it, it almost that. appears to be, like, a, a remake of yeah. uh, they almost didn't. It almost didn't get made, but Stephen King stepped in. What he was? Uh, he heard that they were having trouble getting finances and made some calls, and uh, that's why we got Evil Dead too because Stephen King stepped in and uh, helped Sam Raimi well, produce it. Thanks, yeah. Stephen King. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, appreciate dude. it. Uh, fun little uh, fact. Uh, of course, there's a chainsaw hand in the movie. Yes, iconic. Yeah. Uh, the smoke from the chainsaw isn't actually chainsaw smoke. It's actually tobacco smoke. Just people smoking off. <laughs> off <camera. laughs> and yeah, apparently uh, Evil Dead 4 is supposed to start filming in New Zealand. Yeah, it's this year. I don't think Ash is going to be the protagonist, like the main protagonist, though. I think they're doing a handing of the torch thing. He's at least got to make a cameo. Yeah, for sure. Oh, I don't that's... think the audience would Well, I mean, they did that yeah. Evil Dead remake. Uh, about 10 years ago. Uh, remember, it was like a modern Evil Dead? Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, I yeah, forgot yeah, yeah. about that. Yeah, that, but, that but was the, good. It was gorgeous. Yeah. But this one's going to be called Evil Dead 4, so I'm assuming it's like in that same 
Evil Dead universe, like I, of yeah. the original movies. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like it, it'd be weird if they jumped into like the the new universe of yeah. Evil Dead with Evil Dead Four. Yeah, but I'm in. Yeah, as long as Bruce Campbell's in in at least a cameo. I'll watch I know it. he's producing it. At oh, okay, least. good. Yeah, so so he's got a hand in it. That's you'll right. you'll have that that vision. Awesome. Like, Ash versus the Evil Dead is it's great. Oh, it's such Fantastic. a good one. So good. Yeah. I'm Plus, glad. Xena's in it. Yeah, yeah. Xena. Lucy yeah. Lawless. What up? <laughs> like, come on, man. The original Gina Corona. Yeah. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> you always manage. <laughs> Sneak that in there somewhere. <laughs> it's a yeah. Gina file. A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> Everyone is. Come on. It's yeah, true. fair. She could Sparta kick you through the closest window. That is true. And look hot while doing it. So, yep. Yeah. Rachel. All right. Uh, I guess that's me. So, well, yeah, you just said Rachel. Okay, wow. Rachel's not up yet. Give it's me a second early. here. Um, Should I refer to you as something else? <laughs> no, it's good. It just, it threw, I don't know why. I just, I blanked on who I was. Uh, <laughs> so That's the, not good. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I, it's, having an existential crisis on yeah. camera? Uh, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> 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 Welcome to the media minute. Uh, yeah. We have existential crisis. Uh, but yeah, my first B movie is Black Sheep. Oh, that's nice. it's a fun film. It's so good. Yeah. It, basically, it's an, like from the synopsis that I found on I am, is it BD or DB? DB. DB, okay. Database. Yeah. Database. Oh, that makes sense. Okay, anyways, from the synopsis I found was it's uh, an experiment in genetic engineering turns harmless sheep mm-hmm. into bloodthirsty killers. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. if that doesn't, like, get you excited, there are were sheep. Yep. Were sheep. <laughs> were sheep. What else do you need? You need, yeah. Sheep. But, like, I think my favorite part is, like, when the guy, like, the guy first turns into the were sheep, and instead of, like, the classic, you hear, bah! And you're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, it just takes you out of the moment because you're like, oh, my God, because, like, the special effects are really wicked, which, by the way, is done by the same production house who did the Lord of the Rings trilogy special effects. Wow. So. Oh, yeah. New Zealand. Yeah. New Zealand. New Zealand. Crush, rocking killing it. it. Yeah. But um, I actually found a lot of fun facts on this. Apparently, um, what was it? Where did I go here? Uh, there's, like, a real-life amputee. There's, like, <laughs> there's one scene where the sheep, at the beginning of the movie, like, a, a sheep bites off a guy's leg. Yeah. Like, they found somebody who didn't have that leg and was like, yo, would you want to do it? And he was like, heck yeah. Sure. So, like, they just like, pulled it off, and so they didn't have to do extra special effects for it, which I thought was really cool. Um, and it won two awards at the New Zealand Film and TV Awards for achievement in sound design and makeup. Nice. Oh. So that's always cool. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah. If, you're, if you're into uh, ridiculous... Where sheep comedy horror. This is the movie for you. Yeah. Um, I found out you can either watch this on YouTube, Google Play, or iTunes. I'm sold. I've yeah. already seen it, but I've. I'm oh, sold. I love it. It's so good. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's a uh, black sheep. Okay. Check it out. Cool, Chris. Kind of an accidental thread here, because you got what was your first one? Evil uh, Dead. Evil Dead too. New Zealand getting a lot of love. Yeah. Oh, nice. Because uh, this is a Canadian slash Kiwi production. Cancon. Yeah, Cancon. Kind of. Boom. Can Kiwi? Can <laughs> yeah. Why not? Why not? Let's, Let's it. do it. But Turbo Kid, um, a young dude, kind of a scavenger, a little post-apocalyptic world. And it's just this young dude living on his own, getting by one day at a time. Meets a girl, and the bad guys. I don't, I don't want to give it away, but. Bad guys are bad. Yeah, the bad guys are bad. <laughs> Basically, it's a Mad Max with BMX bikes. Yeah. What What more yeah. would you want? Yeah, so if you're looking for BMXs, um, robots. I see Michael Ironside. Michael Ironside that, that, that's is That's the selling point for me. Yep. Total Recall, original one. What else is he from? I feel Starship like Troopers. That's yep. it. Okay. I'm like, I know I've seen uh, him somewhere Robocop. Else. Yep. Like the OG o- Robocop? Yep. Nice. Okay. Yeah, based he was also the voice for Sam Fisher for Splinter Cell. Nice. What? Yeah. Damn. Yeah, Michael Ironside. If you need some Michael Ironside in your life. Uh, oh, and V, that series about the aliens. Oh, yeah. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. Dang. That's a, that's a good that's one. That's a, a throwback. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. No, just if you like, uh, it's very much a love letter to 1980s kind of post-apocalyptic movies. I love it. Um... Yeah, that's really good. Mad Max on BMX bikes. So if you're looking for BMXs and swing sets and buzz saws and decapitations, and this movie is insanely gory <laughs> in the best of ways. Nice. To a cartoonish extent. Like, they go over the top. Yeah. So if you want buckets of blood, and actually a really charming love story, too. It kind of kind of tugs at the heartstrings. Yeah, like the... like it, There's some you know, ups and downs. It had some, like, good lines and stuff in it, too, which is always nice. Yeah. And the girl who plays, well, the girl, is just... <laughs> 
adorable and instantly it's like okay I get it the chemistry between the two characters great. yeah well nice. you mentioned buckets of blood so it's time for a segue oh segue. oh you missed no, I'm, I'm switching it up. Oh, no. Okay, fine. I'm spitballing. Come on. Because yeah, in uh, the next movie I'm talking about, they used uh, 24 gallons of fake blood hey. to shoot it. That's a lot of blood. Reanimator from uh, 1985. Fantastic. Heck yeah. It's very loosely adapted uh, based mm-hmm. on a short story by H.P. Lovecraft. Yep. Oh, like, that... They kind of just share the name. Yeah. <laughs> and that's about it. It's uh, credited as the first film to use glow sticks for effects. It was used for the reagent or kind of the magic liquid, which brought back kind of the undead. I could see that. Oh, that's wild. I didn't know that. (laughs) Um, You're a talking head. Get a job in the circus. (laughs) (laughs) It's uh, another fun fact. The building that they used for the medical school in the film was actually the same building that they used for Cyberdyne headquarters in Terminator 2. Oh, cool. Nice. Yep. And, of course, uh, Jeffrey Combs is in it. Yep. Yep. And, my man. Uh, yeah. My man. He played Deep it. Space Nine. Deep Space Nine. <laughs> you got to bring it back to Everything. Deep Space Nine. <laughs> Everything goes back to Deep Everything Space Nine. Everything connects to Deep Everything Space Nine. Everything matters goes yeah. back yes. to Deep Space Nine. He played like four or five parts in Deep Space Nine as well. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. Like way Just like moon. Star Trek. And, like the kind of the 90s Star Trek. He showed up a bunch of times yeah. playing different characters. He was in a Frighteners with Peter Jackson movie with oh, Michael yeah. J. Fox. He's been in a ton of stuff. Yeah. And it was filmed in 18 days. Really? 18 days? Yeah. Huh? I can see that. It's, it's pretty close. Like, it's very uh, confined. Yeah. That's still like, impressive, script. though. Like, that's a short amount of time to film. Like, yeah. <laughs> well, it was 16 days for principal filming and then two days of kind of pickups and reshoots. Crazy. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah, they, they just went through it. Um, didn't really mention the plot. It's about a guy <laughs> who starts reanimating corpses. That's all you yeah, need to know. Yeah. He starts with a cat and moves his way up. Yeah. Was that Toby Hooper? Uh, I can't remember. I'm, I think I'm, I'm looking it up because I'm come prepared. Yep. Yeah, so kinda. unlike me. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, well he's me doing a, that. Yeah, Rachel, give me a second what do you here. got for what do you got for us for your uh, next movie? Oh, I can go. Uh, oh, uh, oh, wait. Uh, I'm I'm confused on the order. Who's next? I don't know. I don't, it's probably. I think okay. we're trying to figure out if it's no. I I, I jumped off from you. So it's Rachel's turn. All right. Well, I I'll know. look it up while yeah. you're talking. We're professionals. Yeah, we know what we're doing. Uh, <laughs> Pretty proud people. Anyways, this important. one, this one, I remember watching, and I was actually freaked out for a while. I don't know what it was about clowns, but you know, clowns are just scary things sometimes, especially when they're killer clowns from outer space. For sure, one of the, <laughs> one of the best movies ever made. Absolutely, yeah. uh, it was actually done in 1988, and the synopsis, if you haven't seen it, is basically aliens who look like clowns. Uh, come from outer space and terrorize a small town. And if you haven't seen this and you're a big fan of B-movies, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah Like, go watch this, yourself. like, right now. Um, you can actually watch it on YouTube or Google Play. You do have to rent it, though, for, like, five bucks, but it's, it's well worth, worth it. it. Yeah. Just yeah. buy a copy. But, yeah, like... It's worth it. The crazy thing about this that I found out, like, I found so many fun facts about this that I was kind of shocked. I was like, wow, they, they know a lot. Um, uh, the guy who did the music, I cannot remember his name for the life of me. I probably should have wrote that down. He uh, went to the studio to give them the master tapes. And the studio was like, you know, this is going to bomb, right? Like, this is going to be a terrible movie. And just, like, completely dogging it. And the music mm-hmm. guy just looked at him and he's like, yeah, but you don't have to like it. But I know people will love it. And yeah. he was right. A lot of people do love it. It's a cult classic. Yeah, it took a couple years to catch on, but... Oh, that, that I still though like, even though it took a couple of years, like yeah. everybody knows it's this a movie cult now. movie. Yeah. I watched that movie probably like once a week as I was like, like when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not it's, even it, kidding. It's such a good film. That explains so much. It does. Like, <laughs> it explains my <laughs> my fantasies of turning people into cotton candy. Yeah. Oh, that freaked me out. I actually, I, speaking Game of the cotton candy and stuff, um, most they had a two million dollar budget. Yep. For, like, the mm. 80s, that was a pretty big deal. Yeah. But, like, the crazy thing that I found out was that it was all used for production costs. Like, the visual effects and the clown makeup and stuff, they did it for, like, no money. Just peanuts? Yeah. Like, nothing. They were able to do that. They would just pull that out and be like, you know what? We got it. And they just did it on their own, and it worked out really well. Their costumes are amazing. Yeah. yeah. So but good. Um, they were nominated for Saturn Awards for Best Music and Best Costumes, because, let's be real, those things were terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and another cool thing that I found out was that the music um, for the entry of Clownzilla, or like the K- King Clown, uh, it was originally written for the trailer for Friday the 13th Part 6. <laughs> and then what happened was they listened to it, they're like, meh, let's go with something a little bit more, you know, yeah. I ice, guess cliche. I, ice cream trucky. Yeah. And then uh, the, the, this movie was coming out and they were like, we really want to use it. And now it's like the iconic theme for Kingzilla. Yeah. Or Clownzilla, not Kingzilla. King Clownzilla, or whatever King it is. 
Yeah. Big clown. Big clown. The big guy. But uh, the final boss. Yep. Yeah, but it's like a super fun movie. Ridiculous lines like throughout the movie. Like yeah, the lick a stick. The, yeah, yeah, it's just ridiculous. It's but, one of those movies where everybody looks like they're having fun. Oh yeah, it's yeah, like totally. it's like you wanted to be on that set. Yeah. For sure. But yeah, if you haven't seen it, what are you doing? Go watch it. Do I it. gave it. I told you where to watch it. So please go do, do that. Do it. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> the wood. But yeah, that's uh, that's my second one. Chris. Reanimator, not directed by Toby Hooper. Oh. Just to clarify. Okay. This is just one of the best movies ever made. <laughs> I don't care who you are. Black Dynamite. Heck yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, it's 100% a spoof on um, exploitation movies of the 70s, like uh, Superfly, Shaft, yep. Dolomite. Black Yellow. Yeah, all that kind <laughs> of stuff. It's just, it, it's a, oh, it's so funny that they even take the time to do uh, the kind of jokes like I appreciate when movies make they're kind of self-aware. Yeah. So there'll be shots where the boom gets into the shot. You'll bump into it. <laughs> yeah. Or there'll be like that. continuity errors where like there'll be a tear on the lady's cheek in one shot and they'll cut away then cut back. The tear's gone. Yeah. They're, 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 they know their source material. Definitely. Yeah. definitely. Yeah. Uh, if you like, I would put this kind of in a class of like naked gun kind of spoofs. Yeah. Well, like, very self-aware. Like the back of the thing says the best piece of cinematic satire since the naked gun yeah, yeah, so, there you go even the box tells you I miss those like satirical movies I do too I, like I think yeah I think what killed them was uh, like the whole like disaster movie yeah. and like mm. the horror movie like like epic movie yeah epic scary mo- movie I, I, I think that's kind of what killed that uh, well they ain't dead yet yeah because this movie's amazing it's, you gotta it's you almost gotta kind of watch it a couple times to catch all the jokes yeah, like they kind of jam packed it. It yeah. was like you're watching it. You're like, oh my god, that's funny. And then you can watch it again and find something you didn't see the first time. And you're like, wait, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, like, what? <laughs> and there's a bar scene where like he's kicking the crap out of like all these guys, and he's like has his nunchucks, throws them off camera, and then they come flying back like a minute later. <laughs> <laughs> just little that's things awesome. like that. Yeah, just, oh, fantastic. Just yeah, I don't know. I don't know where you can find this actually. To be honest, uh, I would say probably mm-hmm. Amazon. Yeah, I feel like yeah, that's most likely. It's probably online somewhere. But yeah, such a good film. Yeah. <sighs> That's what I, I'm, I'm going to go watch it. Yeah. <laughs> he's, a, he's absorbed with it now. Yeah. Yeah. If Chris is leaving, he's going to go watch it. Yeah. And the soundtrack is almost his own character. The soundtrack is amazing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If you're into 70s soul and funk, oh, yeah. Black Dynamite's got you covered. Nice. A little offensive, just a heads up. Yep. <laughs> uh, my third movie. Watch it. Watch it to find out what I'm talking about. Yeah. Is uh, Evolution came out in nice. 2001. It's kind of a spiritual successor to Ghostbusters. It's directed by Ivan Reitman. Oh. You know, it's about kind of like some slubby scientists taking care of a world-ending threat. Uh, it was this? It was originally supposed to be a serious science fiction film, though. But Ivan Reitman is like, no, we're going to rewrite this as a uh, comedy. I like it. Of course, you got uh, David Duchovny, Orlando Bloom. Nice. Yeah. yeah, they got quite a few people. David um, Duchovny. What's he up to nowadays? I'm not sure. Just hanging out. That wasn't there like a recent X Files movie that, I it, there was. or like a re- series or something, and like it just died. I don't know. Yeah, kind of went boop. Yeah, went huh. bit. Anyways, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, fun fact: It was shot near Christmas, so the production company asked the residents to delay putting up their lights, <laughs> so like it wouldn't like interfere with the shoots. Bah, oh. But after they finished shooting, the company paid city uh, workers overtime to decorate the town. Oh wow! So it wasn't just like no, you can't put up your lights. So they, yeah, like they were they yeah, were just being they made up for it. That's good. Uh, it's got a couple of connections to uh, the Silence of the Lambs universe. What? Uh, Ted Levine's in it. Hmm. Of course, he played Buffalo Bill. Oh and wow! And you have Julianne Moore who played Clarice in the oh. Hannibal. Nice. Yep. Huh. So there you go. Yeah. That's wicked. Actually, speaking of Silence of the Lambs, who do you think did a better job? Jodie Foster or Julianne Moore? Oh, Jodie Foster. Gotta go with obviously. Foster. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no contest. Yeah. So I think not even I, close. I do think like Moore definitely gave it like a, a solid try, but it's kinda awkward watching it and then you're like, that's not that's not Clarice. No. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Sidetrack. We're up to what three Clarices now. Because that's oh, new yeah. series. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the I mean, one yeah. But uh if you like Ghostbusters, check this one out. It's, it, it's kind of the same thing. Slubby scientists trying to save the world. It's comedic. They did a cartoon at one point too, I think. Oh, cool. Yep. Nice. That's my third one. Whatever happened to the new Ghostbusters? Did that ever come out? Uh, no, not We're yet. S- They've delayed it again. Really? We're still yeah. waiting. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 
You know, like that meme where it's like the skeleton and it's like waiting for. I, yeah. I feel like that's. Oh. Or, or that guy that who's just like stand, like it's hit shots of him like just standing. It's like, yeah, I he's think just it's Pablo Escobar or something. <laughs> yeah, he's just standing and waiting. They did another one with uh, Quentin Tarantino for that too. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, I remember seeing that. Yeah, I feel like we're at that point. <laughs> just all the movies just waiting. Just. Yep. Okay. Sometime, sometime movies will come out. Yeah, again. 2022 is just gonna be flooded. Yeah. Be... I am so excited. I don't know. If, uh, if theaters ever open up again. Yeah. Yeah. Well, around here. We got, Still yeah. looking forward to Mortal yeah, Kombat, which is coming out in like in a couple months. So. Yeah, that's going to look good. Or that's so kind of disappointed by lack of Johnny Cage, though. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it is kind of strange. Uh, uh, Rachel, you got one more? Uh, yes, I do. It, and it's Tammy and the T-Rex. <laughs> yeah. Paul Walker. Classic. It's so good. Uh, came out in 1994, and the synopsis is a little bit longer, so give, give <laughs> yeah. me a solid second here. Sure. So an evil scientist implants the brain of Michael, who is played by a young Paul Walker. Yes. Oh, I'm not Paul Walker. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so you're good. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. uh, a murdered high oh, school yeah. student, uh, he put the brain into a T-Rex, is essentially what happened. Yeah. And then the T-Rex gets mad, and he decides to take it out on his high school tormentors, and is uh, reunited with his high school sweetheart, Tammy, who is played by a young Denise Richards. It seemed like it was probably some of their first films. I would oh, assume. yeah, I would say so. Yeah. But um, it's 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 a lot of fun. Like a giant T Rex out for revenge. What, well, like, what, what else, more do you, what else want? you want? Animatronic. Yeah, and it was yeah. like it, none of it was CG. It was like a legit T Rex. And I actually found out how that happened. Um, so this guy owned a, a amusement park in Texas, but he had this animatronic. <laughs> T-Rex from Brazil. Yep. As one does. Uh, you know, just as amusement park people. I have, have two in my backyard. Really? Wow. Yeah. I, I gotta get on that. So but um, clutter. Yeah, and he like, he talked to the director and the director was like, yeah, like, you know, that's super cool that you have this thing. And the guy was like, well, do you want to make a movie with it? And he's like, wait, what? And he's like, yeah, he's like, I want this to be in a movie. Hmm. I'll give it to you for two weeks if you can make a movie. So he wrote a script in one week and the entire time they were on set, um, he kept asking people. He's like, "If you have any ideas, please help <laughs> yeah, me." Yeah, I am hard <laughs> up. Because he's like, he was asking everybody. Because he was like, just super like, I don't know what to do with this. And uh, they only had the T Rex for two weeks, so filming in total took three <laughs> for the rest of it. And like everything, it sh- and it shows, but yeah. in yeah. a good way. In a, yeah, but like another fun thing, or not fun, I guess, not for the stuntman, anyways. But like a stuntman apparently got bit by a jaguar. I, that, I don't even think there's. I don't a jaguar remember there the being movie. a jaguar yeah. in the film. It's just random yeah. jaguar biting. I, I guess so. Yeah. Like they had a loose jaguar. This guy got fit. Well, I guess like on the well, outskirts of like L.A., they got like mountain lions and stuff. Yeah, yeah not a jaguar. That's not no, a mountain not lion. Not a jaguar. But I'm I'm trying to like piece it. I don't, I'm no, trying no, to meet him halfway. Joe Exotic was there. Yeah. Oh, there we go. That's yeah. what it was. <laughs> Tiger King just showed up. Remember this oh, time last year when everybody was watching Tiger King? I I, I rewatched it recently, and yeah. I'm still sitting there like. I cannot what? financially recover from this. Yeah. <laughs> Basically. But um, if you are looking to watch it, you can watch it on Amazon Prime. Nice. And I, I think it comes with the Prime subscription, so you don't have to rent it or anything. And, and Shutter. Oh, yep, yeah. that too. My Which bad. is kind of Amazon Prime, but kind of not. You have to pay for the subscription. Yep. Yeah. But, don't be um, like me and confuse this film with Theodore Rex, which was Whoopi <laughs> Goldberg yeah. and an animatronic T-Rex fighting crime. See, that also sounds very epic, though. This is very B-movie. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think it's like considered one of the worst movies, actually. There's definitely oh, some really? overlap. This yeah. just has a lot more violence. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, like... <laughs> yeah, they restored... At least, at least the version on uh, Shudder, they restored all the gore they had to take out. Well, see, yeah, because originally they had it, like, shot where it was all gory, but then it's like, they're like, oh, we need a PG-13 rating, so yeah. they took it all out. Yeah. And then the Italian dub had all the gore. Somebody found it, and they're like... Yeah, this is amazing and so yeah. they restored it to the the English the original nice and all was so, well yeah. and then everything was fine peace in the was restored yeah. but yeah no I had a lot of fun watching this movie it's so good it sounds oh, like yeah. a so fun good. movie yeah but uh, yeah if you're into T-Rex's revenge and young love <laughs> it's just a <laughs> movie for you do it yes yeah. yeah and weird doctors yeah really weird doctors like what doctor <laughs> looks at a high school student and is like I'm gonna put that in a T-Rex like that's a very reanimator thing. Yeah. Herbert West. Very. Yep. Oh my God, it was him. <laughs> it all makes sense. It's Herbert West yeah. all along. It's Jeffrey Coombs. <laughs> he's in everything. Did you know he's in uh, Deep Space Nine? 
No. Yeah, Jeffrey Coombs. Really? Yeah, he was in the reanimator. He was also in Deep Space Nine. <laughs> you know how you guys were literally saying we always go back to Deep Space Nine? <laughs> this is us going back to Deep Space Nine. Also, he plays Ratchet in one of the more recent uh, Transformers cartoons. Oh, really? Yeah. Nice. Who Which is a doctor, <gasps> like oh. the Transformer doctor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> That's kind of weird. I'm going to find a way to work in an Iggy Pop tie-in yeah. to Deep Space Nine. We'll do it. I haven't, I haven't done it yet. But yeah, Iggy Pop was on Deep Space Nine for like, I think just one episode. Yeah. But it's between the two of you, the amount of stuff I have learned <laughs> about Deep Space Nine. Yeah, just watch. That's all you got to do is watch Deep Space Nine. Yeah, watch Deep Space Nine. Educate yourself. Uh, <laughs> on, on DS9. Well, uh, coming up to, to the end, anyone else have seen or read anything that they want to bring up? Daniel isn't real. Yes. Shudder. Yes. Again. Incredible movie. Really messed up premise. They, like, kind of hit the gas pedal, like, right out of the gates. Like, they didn't let up until the end of the movie. Yeah, it was a little over the top. I did like it. Oh, there was there were certain we scenes should... that were, like, really uncomfortable for me. Like, there's one scene... <sighs> Just do it. Just do it. Okay, there's. We should tell them what the movie's about. Yeah. Oh yeah. Sorry. Um. So basically, um, Luke. Yep. Our main character. uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger's son. Patrick. He. Patrick Schwarzenegger played. Daniel. Um. Miles Robbins, who's Tim Robbins' son, played Luke. So a a bit of a dynasty cast. Yeah, a little bit. Uh. But anyway, so Luke. Um. When he was younger, he came up with an imaginary friend because he was a lonely kid and he had a really big imagination. Uh. And his name is Daniel. And he's very charismatic. He's very, like, you know, suave and, like, everything Luke, I think, wants to be. Yeah. Is what I kind of got from it. Uh, And then something tragic happens. And he has to lock Luke away. Or, sorry, Daniel away. (laughs) My bad. Got names mixed up. And then, like, uh, Luke goes through, like, a crazy, like, family trauma and brings back Daniel. And, uh, you know, everything's going fine. And then further down in the movie, they realize, like... Daniel's not really a good guy. Yeah, like, this guy's is, messed up. He's yeah. kind of a prick. Yeah. And um, I liked That's everything important. about the movie. There was, like, a few things that I didn't like. Like, the ending for me kind of left a little bit to be desired. Mm-hmm. But um, for the most part, it was a really, really good movie. It came out in 2019. Uh, if you're really into psychological thriller, horror, fantasy. With a with a dash of Fight Club? Yeah, a little bit. As the whole Tyler yeah, thing. Yeah. Kind of. well, yeah, well, as you're described, I started yeah. thinking Fight Club. Oh, absolutely. But, yeah. like, yeah, some of the... Some of the scenes were really messed up. Like, Daniel... Oh, how do I explain this without... What were you talking about? Well, when... Oh, how do I do this? Because <laughs> I feel like it's a pretty pivotal scene, so I, like, I don't want to... Well, you can just edit it, it out later. Edit it, edit it out, but edited yeah, but... No. Anyways, there's, like a, there's a scene where Luke's body gets, like... I don't know how to explain it. Okay. Um, that's fine. <laughs> she tried. Yeah. I tried. But I was like, eh, it's a pretty pivotal thing. I don't want to be the spoiler guy because that's his job. Yep. So. Chris, you got what anything uh, new you want to talk about? Anything that you're currently watching? or? I got nothing. No. What about you, Mike? I'm buying old Xbox One games. That's what I'm doing <laughs> yeah, nowadays. Yeah, do it. Mortal Kombat uh, 10. Nice. Got Gears of War 5. Tekken. There you Tekken. Go. Yeah, I got the Tekken 7. My man. Yeah, we don't. We kind of abandoned the video game thing, Sorry, so guys. shout out to Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I started watching uh, Resident Alien. Uh, Ooh. It's got Alan Tudyk or whatever his name is. The guy who played Walsh on, or Walsh on uh, Firefly. Uh, he was the pirate guy okay. in uh, Dodgeball. Okay, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> he was okay. the voice of the chicken in Moana. Yeah, okay, I know who you're talking about. <laughs> was he actually? He yeah. was Hey Hey? He was Hey Hey. Yeah. Uh, but it's uh, apparently it's based on a uh, comic book series. It's about an alien who crashes on Earth, and he becomes a doctor in a small town. And uh, as one does, yeah. <laughs> it, yep. And this guy, like, he he hates humanity. Uh, there's this small kid that can like actually see his alien form, so he's got like an ongoing rivalry with this like kid who who actually knows what he is. That's hilarious. Uh, and he does a like fantastic job of looking like someone that's been like inhabited by an alien. It, it looks like very uncomfortable in his skin and like makes all sorts of inappropriate comments or so, stuff like that. that. Uh, yeah, so it's currently running on CTV, I think, if you're Canadian. Okay, cool. So, uh, I watched the first four episodes, I think, in a block yesterday, and they're like 40-minute episodes each. So, oh, nice. Uh, definitely been enjoying that. I love that Like he's an alien that hates humans and decided to be a doctor. Yeah, <laughs> well, what happens is that like he's in this small Colorado town. Yeah. Uh, 
he like kills the original doctor and takes over kind of his his body and then the police come and they're like hey there was a murder in town so we need you two to like uh, do an autopsy oh. so like he, <laughs> he's dragged out to do this and he's trying to fit in and everything so that's awesome yeah i love that i'm gonna have to check that out yeah it's a fun show yeah and uh, that pretty much wraps up this edition of Media Minute. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you uh, hit that like button, subscribe, do all the little internet thingies Smash that you got to do. Comment. Let us know what you think. We need some comments. Yeah. 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 Well, I've been thinking about making a Twitter account for this podcast. Yeah. Podcast? Yeah, I guess it's a podcast. Do it. Yeah. Do it. What do you think? Should we do it? I think. Yeah. Right. yeah. I'll, uh, I'll look into it. <laughs> anyway. All right. Just... Just I get some back uh, feedback <laughs> on that one. <laughs> I'm Michael Ford. I'm Chris Rapskowski. And I'm Rachel Edge. We'll see you next time.